say I, I only wish we were talking under different circumstances. Um, as far as the context of our conversation, obviously it's revolving around the news that hit on Saturday, June 27th. Mike Hoppinger tweeted out that you tested positive for GW1516 for a second scheduled bout in a row. And I'm just going to hit you with the question that's probably on everybody's mind right now. How in the world could this happen again after a, a, a huge debacle the first time last April with, with Anthony Joshua? Tell me how and why this happened, if you have an explanation for it. Um, first thing I can say is that uh, a lot of people don't understand what GW1516 is, and it's not much I can really say on the whole matter because, you know, due to the legalities that we're dealing with right now. But let's get one thing straight. This is not a needle in the booty. This is not a needle in the stomach. This is something that was ingested. Uh, we don't know if it's contaminated or on and so forth, but we're investigating as of right now. And um, me and my team are just working due diligently to, to get the facts 100% straight. It's going to be hard for people to accept that when they hear you say that right now. Ooh. They're they're assuming, right, that, hey, you have this in your system, that, that you're Ooh. responsible. And I know that VADA's rules even say that you're responsible for what goes in your body. Now, you're talking about the possibility of the ingestion of it, um, something along those lines. Ooh. Do you have an idea of what that would be? If, if you're going to expect the public to accept that, is Ooh. there a, a substance that you have in mind that, that would have caused this? Um, we, we do have some um, speculation, but like I said before, we're, we're still investigating, investigating everything. And um, we have things sent out to the lab, but me and my team are working on it, and we're getting everything in order. And, um, you know, the, all the information will come out as soon as it's available. It's far Those are some words of Jarrell Miller. And this is the first time he's actually had an interview with anyone regarding his failed drug test. And at least we know now that it was GWH or GHW1516, GWH1516. And what I've heard in the first two minutes is that he's taken, he's taken the Dillian White route. Okay, because you remember that one guy, and it was that one guy that was like, hey, I'm for Dillian White. Okay, the guy that failed three tests, Jarrell Miller, and everyone was like, no, <laughs> you know, I don't want you for me, right? People were like, no, that's the wrong guy you should be talking to or whatever. But he's taking the Dillian White route by not explaining anything to anyone regarding anything. The only thing it was is GWH 1516. We knew we know about that. At least this is the only thing that's been confirmed. But then yet, it's because it's a refusal to talk too much about it or just shed light on it like, hey, um, just basically say, I don't know. Don't say, oh, well, we're investigating. We have speculation. But if you don't know what it is, just, hey, I don't know what it is. I don't know how the hell it got in my system. It wasn't from a needle. It wasn't something I injected willingly. Okay? Like, I get that, but... You, you know, you were, you were trying, it, it was almost like he was like, well, people don't know what GWH 1516 is. Okay. Why don't you enlighten us? Why don't you tell us what it is? You know what I mean? Well, I can't say too much. I mean, sure you can. If you know what the hell it is, you know, I know what I'm, I speculate. He doesn't want to talk too much about it because he knows exactly what the hell GHW 1516 is. Okay. He knows what it is. So I think. If he did start to explain what it is, people are going to be like, yeah, you know a lot about this substance. Yeah, but you tested positive. But then we already know that. So it's not anything that's a secret that you you know what it is. You, you, are, you, you, you put this in your system once before to have an edge. Okay. But anyway, let, let's go on. Let's move forward. As substances and i think this is where a lot of people are going to be skeptical and obviously there's there's a history of this at this point there's a track record um now looking at this and talking about this drug in particular a lot of people would assume that hey 
after the first time or, you know, after the Joshua fight where so much money was on the table that mm -hmm. was lost, um, I think you even said it in multiple interviews that I'm going to be extra careful about what I put in my body. I'm going to be yeah. about what I put in there. I'm going to look at everything. I'm not going to even look at a cheeseburger the same way again. Right. Um, when you say that, it, it's assumed that, okay, he is going to be super diligent. Is there a reason why you weren't this time? No, we were, we were super diligent. The thing is that um, there is information that needs to, that will come out eventually. And um, one thing I say is before that, I've made mistakes, big mistakes, losing financial rewards with AJ. Um, you know, that fight hit me hard. Me and my team have, you know, legal advisors. We're dealing with this current situation. So I can't say too much. You know, knowingly, I know I messed up again with the world watching. I know it sounds crazy, but why in the hell would you think I would go back and do something repeatedly, knowingly, that I'm coming back in my my return fight for net with the financial setbacks and the hardship that I'm dealing with in my life. So, you know, I want the general public to think about that. And like I said, when the facts and everything come out the right way, um, we'll, we'll deal with it. I, you know, I, I... <clears throat> it looks bad. It, it really looks bad from Jarrell Miller now because that was the hundred million dollar question. Like, why would you take something else after losing that type of opportunity you know um and it's bad you know I, I feel bad for Jarrell Miller because it's like where do you how do you bounce back from this you know how like how how do you bounce back from this how do you you know you know you have lawyers and this that and the other but it's like like that interviewer said uh it's you're responsible for what you put in your body on top of making a claim, you proclaimed that you would not take anything. You know, you would you would go above and beyond to make sure that whatever you take is not on the banned substance list or is not a PED by no shape, form, or fashion. But then you get busted again. So it's like, it's either... It's either Jarrell Miller thought that it's easier to cheat now after getting busted the way he did. It's either that or you were that. You were either that dumb, <laughs> you know, to, to get to do it again, or you just are ignorant to whatever you know about substances, which it's hard to believe. It really is because. You mean to tell me that, okay, let us say, let's put it this way. It would be easier to believe if it was something else. You know what I'm saying? Like if it, if it wasn't GHW or EPO or HGH, it would be easier to believe that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's, that's one thing that sticks out. Dude, it's the same drug you had in your system that you willingly admitted to taking because it was in your system. Okay. And another red flag with Jarrell Miller. Okay. Jarrell Miller snatched all of his social media accounts down. That's a red flag. You never do that. He did it fast. I mean, he I don't even think he canceled them or, or, or deleted them last time. He just made apology. Everybody said, fuck you, you piece of shit. And he moved on. And people were gradually kind of coming over it. Gradually. Not quickly. I mean, because people still remember that shit. It was just last year. But at the end of the day, you, this time... You snatched all these accounts down. You know what I mean? Because I'm looking at it like this. The same way Jarrell Miller, and it, this is why it looks really bad. The same way that you're talking to this interviewer right now, you could have done that on your own social media platform. Counterpunch. You could have been, hey, I know what it seems like. I see what it is. Good guys. You should have went live. Turn the comments on. Turn the comments off. Just get your point across. Just get your statement out. Why did you have to wait three days after popping dirty, snatch all your accounts, then make this statement? Because I mean, I know eventually he had to say something. I get it. But then why didn't he say something sooner? You know what I mean? I guess, you know, OK, like I, I have to figure out what exactly I want. I'm going to tell everybody, you know what I mean? And he hit you with the Jedi mind trick like, dude, you think I'm dumb enough to do it again? 
You know, I mean, it, it, you know, it's clever because it's like, you know, you can convince people that you're not that dumb. You know what I mean? And I hope it sticks for his sake. But at the end of the day, I'm like Lou DiBella. You have to, uh, the commissions have to be accountable. They should have done something with a suspension or whatever, right? But it, but then again, you do have the networks that, that he, he's, his name is mud everywhere. So that's going to be the next hurdle that he has to um, he has to cross. Okay, that's the next hurdle. So it's like one of those things where you're like, okay, you know, um, do does people supposed to believe him? Of course not. You know, because of the obvious. But you know, um, his claim, the only thing he can do is you know proclaim his his innocence. But it's hard. For, it's hard to believe. It's almost like this. You do something, people uh, people accuse you of robbing a bank. Then you leave town. <laughs> That's the same equivalent of him snatching his social media accounts down. You you leave immediately out of town. Y'all, I was out of town. You you leave. You pack all your shit up and you leave. They go to your place. Everything's moved. But no, <laughs> all the boxes, all the furniture's gone and everything. That's exactly what he did. Then he comes back and calls and says, hey, hey, you know. I didn't do it. It wasn't me or whatever. It just looks bad, people. So um, we know about the GW 1516. Um, we know what it's, the drug is. So, excuse me. So now, hopefully his lawyers can work magic or whatever, but he's willing to um, take the six-month suspension. But here's the thing. Before everyone dumps on Jarrell Miller, though, everyone else did the same thing, okay? Anyone else that got caught, Clint, uh, uh, Canelo, he got six-month ban, okay, for testing dirty, okay? Uh, Luis Ortiz, right? Roy Jones, mm -hmm. Sugar Shane. You know, there's a lot of people that tested positive, but it's just this is such a big stink because, for one, he's doing it back-to-back, -back, and for two, you know, he had three different substances in his body. Now this is the same substance that, you know, that you all of a sudden can't talk about, but you've willingly taken before. So again, it all looks bad, but you guys tell me what you think about Jarrell Miller's um, claim that he's innocent. You know, he didn't willingly take anything. Leave your comments below. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunching. Peace.